Okay, so I'm going to try and explain some aspects of the interaction between omega-3 fatty acids and inflammatory processes, particularly the mechanisms that are involved, but at the end make the point that these effects can be very important in terms of human health and disease. So this slide shows a working model for the way I've been thinking about this particular interaction. So the thinking is that it's very important that the fatty acid composition of the membranes of these cells is known and that that can be changed because there's a relationship between the composition of the membrane and the function of the cells. And that relationship involves aspects of the structure of the membrane, the physical properties of the membrane, sometimes called membrane fluidity or membrane order, the assembly of signaling proteins in the membrane in structures called rafts, leading to signal transduction pathways, which in turn ultimately influence gene expression. In addition, as I'll talk about in the next couple of slides, the nature of the fatty acids in the cell membrane also influences the type of lipid mediators that are produced by cells and that are involved in inflammatory processes. So through changing the fatty acid composition of the membrane of inflammatory cells, we can influence aspects of cellular responses all the way from the membrane to the nucleus and including extra and intracellular lipid mediators. So we could really impact on what I've called the phenotype of the cell, that is the way it responds to, uh, to signals. And through changing the cell behavior, then the whole inflammatory response can be influenced. In my view, it's important to know something about the fatty acid composition of the cell membranes. So this slide shows the amounts of two different families of fatty acids in the membranes of mononuclear cells taken from healthy human volunteers. It shows the three common omega-6 fatty acids and the three analogous omega-3 fatty acids. The point of showing this slide is simply to show that there's a higher amount of omega-6 than omega-3 fatty acids in these cells, and there's a particular abundance of one omega-6 fatty acid called arachidonic acid. This has a particular functional significance as shown on the next slide, because arachidonic acid is the precursor of eicosanoid mediators intimately involved in inflammation. So the arachidonic acid in the cell membrane phospholipids is released as the free arachidonic acid when the cell is stimulated. And that arachidonic acid acts as a substrate uh, for various cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase enzymes and some other enzymes as well, giving rise to eicosanoid mediators like prostaglandins, thromboxanes, leukotrienes, and so on. The top part of the slide shows that um, arachidonic acid containing phospholipids can also act as precursors for the formation of endocannabinoids also involved in inflammation. And of course, it's well known and well described that this pathway of arachidonic acid metabolism to eicosanoid mediators is a target for anti-inflammatory pharmaceutical agents. Now one of the features summarized on the next slide is that increased availability of omega-3 fatty acids, particularly eicosapentaenoic acid, EPA, leads to a reduction in the amount of arachidonic acid present in inflammatory cell membranes, and instead the arachidonic acid is replaced by EPA. In addition, EPA can inhibit arachidonic acid metabolism through the cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase pathways. So what this means is in the presence of increased amounts of omega-3 fatty acids, there's less production of the arachidonic acid-derived mediators with high pro-inflammatory potential. As well as that, EPA itself is a precursor for producing alternative eicosanoids, such as the 3-series prostaglandins and 5-series leukotrienes. And these have very weak inflammatory potential. So we've changed the mixture of eicosanoids from one with a high pro-inflammatory potential to one of a lower pro-inflammatory potential. In addition, both EPA and DHA can act as substrates for the formation of E and D series resolvins, respectively, and some related mediators. And these resolvins, protectins, and so on, have very potent anti-inflammatory and perhaps more importantly, inflammation-resolving properties. So again, this is pointing to omega-3 fatty acids reducing inflammation and promoting its resolution. The next slide 
indicates some other possible mechanisms of action of omega-3 fatty acids. And here I'm showing the representative omega-3 fatty acid as docosahexaenoic acid, or DHA. So these would be mechanisms acting in parallel with the change in the production of the eicosanoid and resolvent-type mediators. So data has shown that an inflammatory stimulus, either bacterial lipopolysaccharide, LPS, or saturated fatty acids, act through toll-like receptor 4 to initiate inflammatory signaling through the NF-kappa B pathway. And a series of studies by different researchers have indicated that omega-3 fatty acids, and DHA has been the one that is most studied, can interfere with the signaling from either LPS or saturated fatty acids, although it isn't clear exactly where that effect is seen, whether it's at the level of binding to toll-like receptor 4 something to do with the toll-like receptor 4 association with the membrane, which actually seems the most likely, or something to do with post-toll-like receptor 4 signaling to NF-kappa B. The other two mechanisms shown here are the presence of a G-protein coupled receptor, GPR120, which is actually a receptor for omega-3 fatty acids. And when the omega-3 fatty acid is present, the signaling from GPR120 seems to interfere with NF-kappa B activation. So this is an alternative anti-inflammatory signaling pathway. Finally, the intracellular fatty acid sensor, PPAR-gamma, can also bind DHA as a ligand or DHA-derived um, metabolites as ligands, and PPAR-gamma has a physical interaction with NF-kappa B that prevents the NF-kappa B translocation to the nucleus. So this slide summarizes three different but perhaps interacting mechanisms of action of omega-3 fatty acids, one on toll-like receptor 4 signaling, one on GPR120 as a receptor, and one on the intracellular sensor PPAR-gamma that all act to diminish signaling to the prototypical pro-inflammatory pathway uh, NF-kappa B. So I've captured that in the next slide on a cartoon that tries again to bring these different mechanisms together. So what I'm suggesting is increased omega-3 fatty acid exposure changes membrane composition in inflammatory cells. This can influence the physical properties of those cell membranes, the fluidity, can influence the assembly of these functional signaling platforms in the membrane called rafts. That the rafts include receptors, but there are also other types of receptors such as GPR120 and PPAR gamma. In addition, the changed membrane composition means there is a change in the substrates available for producing eicosanoids and resolvins involved in the initiation and the resolution of inflammation. So through the changed lipid mediators, through the assembly of rafts, and through the different receptors, there are signals that are produced, and those signals uh, determine the inflammatory cell responses and can impact on both the physiology of inflammation and the pathophysiology of inflammation. So my last slide summarizes these points. So the human inflammatory cells usually contain a lot of the um, omega-6 fatty acid, arachidonic acid, which is a precursor of inflammatory eicosanoids and a target for anti-inflammatory pharmaceuticals. I've told you that omega-3 fatty acids can get into the inflammatory cell membrane and actually replace arachidonic acid and that the change in fatty acid composition of inflammatory cells influences many aspects of the membrane and cytosolic uh, responsiveness to inflammatory signals, including fluidity, raft formation, signal transduction pathways that lead to gene expression, and the pattern of lipid and peptide mediators produced. So through these multiple effects, fatty acids influence inflammatory cell responses and inflammatory processes. Omega-3 fatty acids are found in high amounts in fish oil supplements. And there's evidence that these supplements exert anti-inflammatory actions in vivo and that the findings at sufficiently high dose are clinically relevant.